how do we take victims' claims seriously, but kind of not fall into the believe all victims trap? You're telling us to, to ask questions, to ask questions of, of both parties, to look for objective evidence, to, to look for um, patterns of behavior. I mean, there's a lot of probing that you're, you're both advocating for. But, but we're living in the age of the, the Me Too movement. We're living in the age of believe all victims. You know, all it takes is for a woman to come forward, have a sad story, and she'll be believed. And if you don't believe her, then there's kind of a, a demonization process for those people that, that don't believe her right away. But if you do believe her, there's a demonization process on the other side, you know, that that you're just la- allowing a, a toxic masculinity bias to control your thoughts. And so I guess I'm, I'm trying to think about um, how do we take victims claims seriously but kind of not fall into the believe all victims trap so i would love to hear some thoughts about that yeah i i find it i found it interesting you know how the me too movement kind of like um disrupted all of this kind of um trauma intervention type of stuff um the me too movement was you know, is a type of social justice, quote unquote, revolution or whatever it is, you know, started by, you know, a woman, um, Tarana Burke or Tawana Burke in, um, in 2006, she, she wrote a book and I, and I bought it and I read it to see like what, what her philosophy is. Um, she, so, so she was raped at seven and nine, you know, by a neighborhood boy. Um, and, um, the Me Too movement was started. She started advocating. She was a she was um, an activist, and she started advocating for um, sexual abuse victims um, in the communities that she was doing ministry or not. Min- was it ministry? It was more like activism work. Um, so when she started interacting with sexual abuse victims in her community, um, she wanted a way to connect to them. So she, you know, she she wanted to let them know. Well, I've experienced this too. And then she started doing. Um, um, Me Too workshops to to help support victims. So initially, the Me Too movement, whatever, like it started out with good intentions, but then and then 2017 happened, and um, it took a very different turn. Um, Alyssa Milano had <clears throat> a tweeted um, a Me Too something regarding the Harvey Weinstein fiasco stuff, and the Me Too movement kind of morphed into this encompassing sexual. So it wasn't no longer just sexual abuse. It started to encompass like sexual harassment in the workplace, um, um, specifically in regards to Hollywood and how they interacted with each other. Um, So the Me Too movement hashtag um, is now used as kind of like this umbrella to cover all women concerns in the workplace and social settings um, with with an emphasis on childhood sexual abuse um, along with sexual harassment, along with date rape, along with work rape, and even inappropriate banter that women have to hear from men, you know, um, in either workplace or social place settings. So interestingly, during um, Burke's early activist life, she was working in these kind of lower income communities and her own daughter at the time was sexually abused by another beloved neighborhood teen. And so her, her daughter now identifies as um, non-binary. So the Me Too movement now um, easily kind of marries into the advocacy for LB, LGBTQ plus whatever communities. I don't know if I missed anything. Um, so in regards to believing all women because of like those believe all women or Me Too movement, I think there should be a degree of caution um, in the church specifically um, because those things together merging those things together are unhelpful because um, you you can't advocate for all of those issues by at the same time by wanting to um, like help women but you're not really even helping women like again I think I, I said it earlier you know that sexual abuse is very different from sexual harassment or other kinds of abuses 